These sample sites are just, just a couple of probably 30 sample sites in this area. I'm Austin Mouton, and welcome to this episode of Wet Work, where we go out into the field and do, well, wet work. I'm here with Mr. Patrick Banks, a Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries Marine Biologist, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about what we're doing today. Mr. Patrick? Thank you, Austin. Uh, what we're going to do today is go out uh, into our coastal area. Today we're in the extreme eastern part of the state, uh, in the Lake Pontchartrain, Lake Bourne uh, area of our coast, and we're going to do some fishery sampling. So. Uh, we're excited to be here and excited for you to see a little bit about what we do. Yeah. And I'm also excited to be here with you. So just stay tuned and we'll show you more wet work. All we're trying to do right now is to scare fish into the net uh, using the engine. We'll, we'll make several passes around the net uh, and then pull it back in and see what we have. Of course, part of the enjoyment of doing things like this is you never quite know exactly what you're going to get. Of course, Austin, this is sometimes how samples go. Sometimes you don't catch anything. And, of course, zero data is, some, is sometimes extremely important. That gets the charm. One of these sites, and it may have been this one not too long ago, uh, produced quite a number of speckled trout. Uh, and quite a number of big speckled trout. I would, I would imagine fishermen might, might, might would have thought that we took all of their speckled trout, but you'd be surprised how productive these areas are. I mean, you know, just millions and millions of fish out here. Is it? Sure enough, a catfish. Just be real careful here. About three quarters of a pound. Okay. Let's take him off and put him on here. Perfect. 13 inches. Let's toss him out. Okay. Cat food! Still alive! Cat food. This pogey is 11 inches, 285 centimeters. Go ahead and do some more wet work, guys. What will this be used for in the future? Well, data like this is very important to our fin fish management program. For instance, uh, setting size limits on fish such as speckled trout. Data like this also goes into our age and growth program, which means we also take uh, ear bones out of the fish and we cut those down. And on those ear bones, it's similar to growth rings on a tree. You can tell how old the fish is. You can hold, hold that uh, in the water about a foot down below the surface. Another thing we have to do at each sample site is take water quality measurements, things like water temperature, salinity, uh, dissolved oxygen, conductivity, things of that nature that really tell us a lot about the world that those animals live in. You'll hold this for me. I'll get the data sheet. Test. Test. What made you get into this business? What made you become a Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries Biologist? Well, it started quite a number of years ago, uh, similar age to yourself. Uh, I, was in, I enjoyed the outdoors. I was interested in the outdoors, interested in uh, the animals that, that live there. You know, just because you have an interest in it doesn't mean that, that you got it all licked, you know? I mean, uh, when you're in school, bio, you take your biologies, your chemistries, your physics, you know, uh, sometimes oceanography classes, things like that. And a big part of biology is also from a math side called statistics. We have to try to figure out what the data is telling us. You know, if we, we catch a few oysters here but not here, or if we have quite a number of species of fish here but not over here, you know, what is that telling us from a biological standpoint? What are we gonna do next? Well, I think we'll, we'll uh, go out into the world a little bit more and we'll, we'll pull a, a scene net, what we call, and give us an opportunity to actually jump out the boat. We'll pull a net through the water and jump out the boat and uh, something we use to measure uh, juvenile of these same species with the gill net that we, we tried to catch. Yeah, that's, you know, part of why coastal restoration is so important in the state is, you know, these marshes are nursery areas for all these species that we, that we love to eat and love to catch. Without these nursery areas, you know, of the, the, 
coastline, which, which you, you're very well aware of, you know, that we're losing these, these marshes at an at a unbelievably fast rate, you know, we wouldn't have the fishery that we do. What exactly are we about to do? Well, we've pulled up here to this shoreline uh, in order to use this other piece of sampling gear called a seine net. And this is a little bit different than the gill net that we used earlier. As you can see, the mesh sizes are much smaller. Right. Um, and the reason why they're much smaller is because the, the purpose of this net is to uh, capture and sample small juvenile fish. Right. So uh, the gill net earlier, we were sampling adult fish. This time we're gonna sample small juvenile fish. I know you said this is, this is for juvenile fish, but is there any type of data that you're gonna collect from this? Well, it gives us um, a good indication of, of reproduction in different species, how strong the reproductive event may be, things of that nature. So the uh, sampling of juveniles is extremely important. We're gonna put one end of the, the net here on the, the beach. We're gonna use the boat to wrap the rest of the net around put the other end on another part of the beach there, and then we're gonna pull it in and see what we get. What, what purpose do these killifish have? They're, they're one of the, the more common, I guess, and, and, and best uh, marsh edge or marsh surface fishes. Okay. These guys will actually get up when the marsh is high, reproduce on the marsh surface, live on the marsh surface. So they're going around eating everything, all the algae, everything else on that marsh surface, coming back off when the water recedes, getting, unfortunately, eaten by bigger things than there. <laughs> so it's helping to move that, that energy, actually, from what's produced in the marsh to then into the water, water column like that. Uh, we'll, we'll take these guys, and similar to what we did on the other, on the, other, uh, on the gill nets, we'll, we'll do the same with, with measuring these guys and, and uh, getting all the information from it and do the same water quality. And, the main thing, unfortunately, with this is dragging this net back to the boat. <laughs> this is a lot easier putting it out than it is hauling it in. So uh, Patrick and I are going to go get some water and uh, put the net in the boat. Go ahead. Well, guess I'm stuck doing the hard work. Well, the hard work is over like, so I guess I have to do it all. So. Come on. Y'all yeah, have fun. In the boat. You guys really are not going to help me at all. I have no idea what I'm doing. Wet work. It truly is wet work. Yep. This is a good wet part. <laughs> <laughs>